Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome to the channel. My name is Asim Amjad, and in this week we discuss about inelastic beam bending. And our learning outcome is to define the inelastic bending for the symmetrical cross section and for unsymmetrical cross section. Let's discuss first inelastic beam bending for symmetric cross section. So here is our stress strain diagram which we study in previous video lectures related to fundamentals of mechanics of material and now we can idealize this material as idealized elastoplastic material so we have a linear region and then we go completely plastic so now this is a very good assumption for the mild steel and it's particularly good for mild steel as the normal stress strain diagram is shown here so the yield stress and the proportional limits are assumed to be same so we directly go to from linearly elastic region to perfectly plastic region and for symmetric beam we have symmetry about the x axis and the y axis so here will be our fully elastic situation and we have not yet reached an inelastic condition but as we continue to put a moment on the beam we eventually get a point where the outer fiber starts the yielding and we move into the plastic region that shown here so i have an elastic portion of the cross section and then i go to the plastic and it's symmetric about the neutral axis and equal moment and equal distance above and below the neutral axis and i can go to the point where the beam become fully plastic so the top is fully in compression and the bottom is fully in tension as shown here so now i want to go just up to the point of where we go fully plastic so if i go to the fully plastic then i'm not going to add any more load and the beam will become a plastic hinge and fail so for fully symmetric beam the neutral axis here all of the three cases remain at the centroid because of symmetricity and the other thing that i want to tell you that the most material in the elastic range it's reasonable to assume that the tension and compression stress strain curve are the same so we are going to assume that the hood laws apply the same for both tension and compression above and below the neutral axis and the other assumption that we made that that still hold true are that plane section remain plane we have no twisting no buckling and we have small deflections and so we find regardless of the material the strain is proportional to the curvature and varies linearly with distance y from the neutral axis across the cross section so so we are going to find that it's very useful in solving actual problem as we go alone okay so here is our inelastic beam bending situation where the beam that are symmetric about the y axis but unsymmetric about the x axis and these are called the unsymmetrical cross section and so here we have where it's symmetric about the y axis but about the x axis i have a larger flange up here and i do down here here's an other example of unsymmetrical cross section a t type cross section and so far 
beam that are symmetrical about the y axis but unsymmetrical about the x axis so now let's load what happened when we go from elastic to fully or partially elastic to fully elastic region so for fully elastic this is what we look like so none our rotation on a beam have gone to the plastic range as i do partially plastic to the first place that goes plastic is the furthest rotation from the neutral axis and so this has drawn plastic and what happen is the neutral axis actually shift up and then once we go to fully plastic everywhere along the beam has drawn into the plastic region and so far the, the unsymmetrical beams you will notice that the neutral axis shift away from the fiber that first experience the in elastic action so in this case shift away from this lower section of the beam and migrate further and further away until we get fully plastic so at fully plastic condition what happens is that the area above the neutral axis is equal to the area below the neutral axis and again there is some difference in the stress strain diagram for in elastic region of the tension and compression but these differences can be reasonably neglected for most of the real problems and so that the other thing you want to remember is that of all the beam bending assumptions would remain the same so as we going to have to work with strain to solve these problem and strain regardless of material is proportional to the curvature and varies linearly with distance y from the neutral axis and so we now know how to approach inelastic beam bending problem i will see you in the next video lecture where we actually solve the real world engineering problems